Hey guys, hope you're well and welcome to this huge commission completion video. We have the almighty Scalock and Vorgoroff the Scarred. What an incredible model. Uh, it's a huge Cornate Dragon for Age of Sigma from Forgeworld. Uh, the model is as big as a cat or a small dog. Uh, and Ben, one of the artists here, has had a great time working on it. Now, um, if you are unfamiliar with Siege Studios, then what we are as a business is a premium commission painting studio located in the United Kingdom. We have a team of 28 painters that all paint from an above tabletop level as a minimum all the way up to competition level. And uh, if you want to quote from us then very simply all you need to do is head to our website which is linked in the description of this video it will take you to the contact form on the contact tab complete the contact form by selecting the drop down options that are relevant for you and then including a message in the message section of a model list in our format which is listed on there fire that off to us to get the process started and get a quote back from us uh, let's jump into this awesome video and look at this monster in more detail see you guys back in a second so I don't know where to start with this model because it is absolutely vast in its detail and all the bits of uh, intricacy on the model, including the custom basing, which we've done for our client, which has got eight Cornate dudes just running across, uh, charging at something as well as they would be being corn. Uh, straight off the bat, you can see obviously the size of this model. If I put my hand here, you can see the, my hand compared to the size of the base. Uh, you know, it's absolutely massive in the sense of scale, uh, real centerpiece for your army or for your uh, collection. Now I'm going to move him forward ever so slightly and I'm going to have to be really careful with this because he is actually loose uh, as a model we didn't want to put join it all together for purposes of postage so I'm just going to move this slowly forward so you guys can have a look uh, you know in a bit more detail of his also now Scalock is obviously riding Borgoroth uh, a really cool model we'll just get that to focus for you guys first of all so you can see and uh, Ben spent a lot of time give, give him and some more of a pallid kind of uh, muted kind of uh, colorway on his skin his weapons have got lots of extra little details on them blood splash as you expect with any Cornate um, model. Uh, obviously his axe has got loads of uh, splatter all over it. Uh, you've got a nice bit of verdigris just on the brass areas of the model as well, which is really cool. So that's just Scalock there sitting on his throne. Uh, nice muted kind of color palette on those skulls that are around his waist on his belt buckle kind of thing. Um, the other thing as well is these chains that you can see. Now Ben's actually used real chain for these uh, and this is Paul taut here. But the reason why we've used real chain is because the resin versions, are all, as good as they are, um, obviously were such a delicate little thing Thing, it's actually better to use real chain which is what uh, we've done on the project uh, now moving around here you can see obviously that a really nice example here of the skin there's loads of purple and pink and red and orange tones all in the skin just to really add up the vibrancy uh, so as it moves in light you get to see those lovely glazed color hues on that skin tone there as well which is really really cool um, let's just move that around this and you can see that lovely ornate throne i love the transition of color on the throne as well you've got that lovely black uh, bright red to black on those sort of horns or scale parts there as well see all the skulls and everything that are in that uh, in that sort of mount that he's got there Again, all the brass has got nice, subtle sort of chipping and highlighting done in it as well, just to add that real intricacy to it as well, which is lovely. Uh, so that's just Scallop there riding the beast. I'll just pull this forward as much as you can see, you can see it in a lot more detail. So that's just him. And then uh, what we will do is I'm going to come back in a second. I'm going to lower the camera angle down slightly so you can see uh, from a bit more of a direct version on of the uh, of the dragon. You can see his detail and then we'll finish up with a base. But there's Scallop there, just giving a bit more of a focus for you guys just so you can see it really Really, really, really cool model. Loads of awesome little details like his belt buckle, the haft on the axe has all been highlighted and edged as well, which is really nice. You've got all the brass work. You've got loads of blood spattered over his chest and over his body as well, as if he's been sort of killing things that are quite close to him as well, which is really nice. You've got his flowing mane there, all fully highlighted through a couple of colours just to really add that vibrancy of, on, the, on the black as well, which is quite nice. Uh, so that's just that. Well, back in a second, I'll lower the camera down. You can see the almighty of Orgoroth in more details. So see you guys back in a sec. So we've moved the camera down a little bit so you can see Vorgoroth now, this awesome, awesome, evil looking dragon. We'll start with the head just so you can see that. Uh, obviously everything is fully painted and fully picked out. You've got the lovely, lovely eye details in here. And Ben spent a lot of time just getting the eye really, really focused and really sort of the aggression showing that very, with various colours. Huge tongue sticking out with blood all over it there as you can see. All the teeth and everything fully highlighted and fully picked out. This huge sort of like horn or crest of bone here into this very axe kind of looking shape which is quite fitting for, for a 
corn model. Um, I love the subtle underbelly on him as well, which is really nice. You've got this pinky sort of purpley line, like underbelly on him as well. And it's a nice parity between the tongue and also the hues that are on the, uh, the softer skin, much like the tongue, which is quite soft. Uh, now, if we start moving him around, you can see all the little blood marks and little flecks and cornate symbols and things all over. You've got a couple of skulls here that just come down from the, from the, uh, from the, uh, the skull throne. You've also got obviously all these lovely, lovely darker contrast areas in the skin as well, which is really nice. You've got the, the, the huge claw just you know, cresting on this broken bit of masonry here at the bottom, just so you can see, uh, with all blood sort of spattered over. You've got a few of the initial scars, a lovely wound here on his neck as well. Um, obviously, he's given his name, so we'll just move this around a bit more so you can see from the other side. Now, the wings do, t do hide quite a bit just because of the way that they're not fully sort of stretched outward, but we'll move around here just so you can see this. We'll lower the camera slightly for you guys so you can see. So Let's have a look here. You've got this uh, sort of claw weapon thing here that's all brassed out with a great big skull on it, some teeth as well, which is really nice. And that's all sort of been highlighted and, and with various brasses and golds and silvers just to add tonal variance to that metalwork. Got blood all over it as well, which is really nice. Loads of impacted skulls as well. It's like the skulls are part of his hide, which is really cool. Uh, you've got the corn symbol here that's just inside and mounted on his chest as well, which is like it looks like it's been branded or put on there as well, um, which is really cool. And then we'll move around to the tail just so you can see a bit of the tail here here as well on the rear from the rear kind of view again you can see all those skulls on the back of Scalloc's um throne as well there at the top lovely lovely carapace here and this is soft black which is really nice and that's been highlighted with some greys as well just to add tonal variance to that uh, and then you've got this huge tail here that we can just get this to sort of focus a bit better uh, you've got a chain wrapped all the way around uh, with loads of skulls all in there as well and a huge huge weapon just mounted to his tail uh, as well just so he can thrash that round and you know eviscerate people with that uh, and then you've got that armor plating there just on the back of the back of the tail here as well which is really cool more skulls all sort of putting on here. Got some wounds here, so all these scars that are bleeding as well on him, hence his name. Uh, and then we can have a look at some of these wings as well. So if I just move the camera up so you can have a look at the wings as well, obviously it's quite a, just to show you the size and scale of this model, we're having to move the camera quite considerably. You've got this lovely tonal variation on the wing with this pink and orange into the nice hidey color for the for the sort of stretch part of the sinew on the skins as well, which is really cool. And a nice subtle undertone of purple and pink in there, as I mentioned, which just adds a lot of tonal variance to those wings. Um, we'll have a look at this other one here. I'll try and raise this a bit more just so you can see. You've got all these blood fleck marks on here where I'm guessing claws and things have hit things and blood splattered all over the wings. You've got some rings and things all sort of, you know, he's got a bit of jewellery as well, a bit of, bit of bling, um, as you can see there as well. And uh, apologies for the phone. And um, and then we've got uh, got all that different tonal variation just on the, on the wings, as you can see there as well, with all the scars and things that have been painted uh, as well. So just move this around a little bit more. Again, the model is absolutely vast, guys. There is so much detail on it. Um, I'm just trying to be careful to move this around here. Again, moving around back around to this side, you can really see all those skulls and everything on that throne as well. And again, you've got that lovely, lovely tonal variation in the skin, which has had loads of glazing done to it. Ben spent hours and hours getting these colors on the model in this way. So it's got a really, really nice uh, visual interest on it. So as the model moves in the light, you'll see all these different hues in the skin, which is really, really cool. Uh, so that's just Forgaroth in all of his awesome glory. Uh, you know, the model really is incredible. Uh, I'm gonna come back in the final section and show you guys the base as well because our clients requested a bit of a, a bit of a sort of display base for him as well um, and this huge huge base that we put on the model so back in a second to have a look at that in a bit more detail see you guys back in a sec and finally, let's have a look at this awesome display base for Volgaroth and Skalok. Um, our client requested us to make a little scene, which is really cool, to go with the, the dragon. And uh, Ben has done a stellar job amalgamating the, some eight, eight blood reavers, I believe they're called, but correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, uh, running through like a wooded kind of like town kind of area. Obviously, we've got the building that's been destroyed by Volgaroth, um, but we've got some woods. Uh, so these eight reavers are running forward like crazy madmen. Um, obviously, they've been in battle already because they're splattered in blood as you'd expect with any corn model uh, and I'll pull this forward just so you can see the scene in a bit more detail uh, we've got eight obviously the number of corn which is what our client requested move that down a little bit for you so you can see you've obviously got the champion here uh, leading from the front and centre which is really cool a couple of dudes just moving forward uh, trying to mind that to not get hit by this massive weapon and then we've got this maniac here running forward 
two, two weapons in hand, and then we've got this other dude here that's really cool. And they're all covered in blood, which is really nice. And we've got this final dude just at the back up there. You know, he's uh, dragging his feet a little bit. Maybe he just finished someone off or something. Uh, but I think it's quite cool that you've got this lovely scene of these crazy, crazy guys just charging forward, covered in blood, as you expect with any cool models. And, um, and obviously not being squished by this huge dragon or not be even sort of bothered the fact that they're sort of under this almighty beast. But yeah, as you can see here. Now with the colorways and with the painting, Obviously, Borgoroff, the dragon, is very, very hot and warm with the colours that have been used. Um, and, we, and I think Ben's approached it in a really nice way whereby the, the colours on the on the skin tones are a lot cooler. Uh, so you've got a nice contrast in sort of warmth between the, the infantry uh, or the display base and also the uh, the dragon as well, which is really, really nice. Uh, but yeah, we'll just get this to zoom in a little bit more. Obviously, I'm trying to be really careful not to uh, not to move it too, too strongly, just because I don't want to move anything or knock anything. And the model is a bit loose at the minute because just for shipping. But yeah, you can see these lovely, lovely Reavers just here in really, really cool colourway. Kind of you've got this Madman here, this other dude, and then you've got more just there, and then we've obviously got this dude at the back here as well. Oh, I've missed one. Tell a lie. There's another dude over here just uh, just <laughs> sneakily minding by his foot as well, which is really cool. So that's that dude there. Uh, but I like it from this angle. That's probably why I missed him. But this angle is really cool just so you can see them sort of running forward, bounding forward. And, uh, and yeah, there you go. Uh, overall, really cool model. I will do a final move it back and just uh, I'll move the camera if you can bear with my jiggery sort of moving of the camera. Uh, as you can see, an overall size of the model is absolutely vast, guys. Really, really huge, massive, massive model. Uh, we're going to be back in a second just to summarise for the video and you can see him again in his original front on angle. See you guys back in a second. So thanks for checking the video out guys. I hope you like this absolute monster of a model. Uh, I know Ben had a phenomenal time working on it. He really enjoyed working on a project as big as a small animal. Um, <laughs> so I do hope you have liked it. Um, and as always, if you are interested in a commission with us, be it Age of Sigma or 40K or any other game system, uh, which we work on all of those, and we're happy to paint models for all of those different game systems. If you are interested in a commission, then very simply, all you need to do is head to our website, which is linked in the description of this video. Uh, that takes you to the contact form, which you need to select the relevant drop down options so that for your project and include a model list in the message section in our format which is also shown on there plus any extra details like for example sculpting freehand converting all those bits and bobs we need to know those extra details fire that off to us and then we'll come back to you with a quote and get the process started as well as obviously our uh, website which is linked all of our social media can be found in the description of this video. And I do recommend that you don't give us a like and a follow respectively on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram so you can keep up to date with everything that we are doing as a business and projects that we are putting out there for you guys to see. Uh, and finally, while you're here on YouTube, first couple thing is obviously to give us a thumbs up. It really, really appreciate it massively and it helps us hugely. Secondly, if you're not a subscriber, then I hope that you can take time to just hit that subscribe button so you can keep up to date with everything that we do as a business video wise and content wise. And if you do hit the bell icon, you will be notified when our new videos go up. Thank you ever so much for watching this video, guys. I absolutely hope you loved this as much as we did working on it. And I'll see you very soon in the next video. Look after yourselves. Take care. Bye bye.